a recording of the Southwick Public Library Board of Trustees on September 8th, 2020 at 7 p.m. And we just have to um, give you the reminders on how these online meetings work. Um, so the meeting's being recorded. Um, everybody, when you vote, it should be a roll call. And we need to call a roll at the start of the meeting to confirm who's in attendance. So if we just want to start, say your name, um, and then we can get going. Michael McMahon. Maria Gallo. Tracy Mesmer. Carol Garrick. That was Carol Garrick and Tracy. I, Tracy, I never say your last name right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tracy. That's all right, Mesmer. Mesmer, okay. Yep, so Nobody's expected to. That's all right. <laughs> okay, so if we have everybody, um, if we want to call it to order. Okay, we'll get started. I don't see any members of the public for any public comments, so we can move <laughs> on to communications. <laughs> all right, communications. Um, so we had... Um, a pretty good summer reading. I mean, I, our numbers weren't going to be what they have been in the past. And I told staff that and, you know, I don't want them to get discouraged. But we had a good number of participants. You know, we had, I think there was like 50 kids and almost 20 teens and then like between 10 and 15 adults. So it's not what it was, but it's not bad, you know, and it was kind of a, it was kind of a, we had to figure it out really fast. So I'm glad with what we came up with in the time that we had. Um, so how, how, how did you do it? We did, everything was mostly on, everything was pretty much online. All the events, um, they recorded their hours online. Oh, I'm sorry for that noise. That's an email coming through. Um, yeah, they, they did everything online, recorded, um, their hours online. We did all of our programs were virtual. Um, and it, it was a good, it was a good test run for, you know, I mean, maybe this is how it's going to be next year, too, so we can plan better and be better prepared. But, you know, I'm happy with how it went. I think the staff, um, especially Heather, our young adult librarian, did a fantastic job. She really stepped up because we were lacking, you know, we're, we're down one position, the position who kind of organizes summer readings. So Heather stepped up and she did a really fantastic job and made everything come through. Um, so we're kind of, the, the stuff we have going on in September, we're kind of taking September slowly. Um, we have a lot of programming going on for October, a lot of virtual programs, um, nothing in person as of yet. Um, so we have a lot going on in October. September, we're just, we, we don't know how this month is gonna go with kids going back to school and what that's gonna look like. So we're just kind of taking it slow as far as programming goes. Um, Heather, uh, the young adult librarian and I, she came up with this really cool program for book boxes. Um, and we have got a ton of registrations for that. So it's basically like a book subscription box. I don't know if you guys are, know of those. There's a whole bunch of them you can sign up for. You basically get a selection of books and, you know, some kind of like small goodies. The more expensive ones, do you get like coffee mugs and kinds of stuff? We're keeping it cheap, you know, with like, snacks and maybe some you know something cool here or there to to do um so that we've got a lot of signups for that we're doing it for kids teens and adults and we're basically just you know they tell us what they like we pick out one to two books from our collection to give to them and you know they let us know their hobbies so you know if there's people who like crafting i've got a bunch of small little craft projects we'll put that in the box with some other cool stuff um the re we started the recurring programs online. Our coloring group and our cooking group meet online now, um, and it seems to work pretty well. Um, the cookbook club, they kind of have a monthly theme. Last month, we had somebody demonstrate how to use an apple core. So that was interesting. It worked really well online. Um, attendees liked it, I think. Um, we just finished up last week, our last week. Uh, we had a four-week sign language class. Um, which filled up, there was only 20 slots and they all filled up. So we had 20 people for four weeks. That went really well. People enjoyed it. They want us to do it again. Um, we were planning on doing another pop-up library at the American Inn in September. We're not able to now because um, there has unfortunately been, I think that might be- Hi, I'm finally here. 
Is that Suzanne? Oh, that's Suzanne. Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. Can you just state your name for the sake of the recording? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Suzanne Davis. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we were going to do a pop-up library again at the American Inn because the residents really loved it. Um, and we like getting out there and doing stuff out in the community. But yes. they had a COVID case there, so we're not able to do uh, it. But can I update you on that? Yes, sure. We, the, the man who was positive actually lives on my little cul-de-sac here. Um, well, but we were all tested last week, and we are all negative, Wonderful. except for him. So, oh, that's good. And he's doing okay? He's doing okay. He's, he, when he was first diagnosed, he was asymptomatic. And I believe he still is asymptomatic, but he is quarantining. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, so hopefully we can get back sometime in the near future. Um, a new program we've started is um, Library. It All the new books you have. Don't have. The yeah, yeah. It's, we've re redesigned the library links um, so we can include more blurbs about programs and what's going on. So we wanted to find a new way to get, you know, People, people really rely on those lists of new things that we have. Um, yes, we do. Yes. So now, so now this is, um, people just sign up with their email. They get an email once a week of all the new stuff we have. Um, I haven't got any feedback, positive or negative. So we're just going to, it's any, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, and they do all the work for us. You know, they correlate the email. They send the email out. We basically have to do nothing other than catalog our new items. So I like it. Um, I like it. Was that somebody said they liked it. Uh, and Suzanne likes it too. Good, good, great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, we have been trying to reach out and get more subscribers for our email lists for programs and everything, um, basically, because everything's going online now. So our, our email list subscribers are going up um, we send out emails for the library links. We send it out for events and happenings and everything. Um, I've been kind of taking, what's that? Oh, I thought somebody said something. Never mind. Okay. Um, so we have been working on, um, because we've been closed and we're open only by appointment, I've really been trying to focus a lot on increasing engagement with the community you know, what we can do to reach out and stay connected with people. Um, so we did a big mailing for the senior center to advertise um, our books on the go and the resources we can offer to seniors. Um, and we've also, I've also begun sharing our events and news on all the, the there's a whole bunch of different Southwick Facebook groups. So we've, I've been sharing our news on that too. And I think that's been going pretty good. Um, let me just see. Okay. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Let me just try something. Okay. You still there? Yes, I am still, I am still here. Okay. Um, so, and uh, the friends picnic table arrived, so that's good news. Um, we just need to get it moved to its final spot. And we've been trying to keep track and seeing how our online statistics have looked. Um, and Hoopla, which we signed up for and started roughly in January, um, it's, it's been going pretty good, I think. Where's our total number? Um, you know, in the past, 12 months, this is for a 12 month period, but we've only had it since January. Um, so we've had 81 new patrons use it, which I think is pretty good. Um, okay. We've had almost 600 circulations. So I'm very happy with that as well. I don't know if that's, that's mostly because of COVID or if people are just really liking it, but either way, we're just gonna keep going with it. Um, I, I haven't heard any negative feedback about it. People seem to really like it and um, you know, because we were closed for a while, I increased the number. Normally, we have to pay by circulation for this, but um, because we were closed, I increased the number of circulations people could have, and I think people really like that, and they still really like that while, you know, we're not 100% open as we are normally. So, overall, I'm very, I'm very happy with Hoopla. They are so easy to work with. 
Um, and as is far it as really expensive? No, not not really. Um, the average price per circulation um, on here and the statistics they gave me for the last 12 months is a dollar 72 which it's not it's not bad so in in the past in the past since january since we've had it we've spent about um our, our it looks like our our annual our monthly amount we've spent is about 60 dollars so I mean, if it's if it's making people happy and they like it, I'm fine with it. You know, I'll keep I an eye. On, yeah, I'll keep an eye on the statistics. And yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's just COVID making the numbers go up, but either way, people seem to like it. Okay, that is it for communications. Okay, how about the minutes? Do people have any corrections or additions? Yes. Or I'm sorry. I sent them out around 4.30 this afternoon. I'm sorry. We, we had that house guest this weekend and I was off today. So I'm sorry. I didn't get to sending it to you guys till later. Um, I hope everybody got it and had the chance to take a look. They were pretty short. I got it, but I don't have a chance to take a look at it yet. <laughs> Nor can I find it on my computer. See, my hard drive died two days ago and I had to reinstall the uh, operating system, and I lost so much, oh. including how to get on Zoom. Well, I also apologize. I've had these ready for a few weeks, and I just kept forgetting to send them on to you. <laughs> no problem. Well, they looked good to me. I saw. I'm sure they look good. But I'm not the best at grammar. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start by moving to approve. Um, Suzanne, just say your name too, so that. Okay, Suzanne moves to approve. Second. Tracy seconds, or oh, they already, or Maria did. Sorry. Maria second. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I have a delay. Uh, actually, I was asking for a second. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I can approve my own minutes. <laughs> oh. Well, then I approve. Second. Okay, you're there. <laughs> now you're on the record. Is there oh. a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nominous, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, everybody should have the director's report that I sent out to you guys. Um, I'm sorry for sending out two versions. I figured with the start of the new year um, that it, it would be easier to try to record the statistics in a different way that has been done in the past. Um, so in the new version I sent you, um, I have the circulation, but I've also separated out um, the interlibrary, interlibrary loan items in and the items out. So we can also see those in two separate categories. I think at least Good for, idea. My, I think for my sake, it just makes it a little bit easier to read when everything's broken up. Um, so that is just, just one minor change, but I just wanted to make you guys aware of it. Um, as expected, our numbers are down um, just because of COVID, but they're not, they're not down by a lot. I mean, we're still doing a lot of circulations, a lot of reference questions, um, not as many computers. Computers has been very slow, um, but, you know, I mean, we're still, we're still providing a great service. We're still keeping busy. Um, and, you know, we're still doing a lot of curbside and curbside always, there's a lot more effort that goes into that than a regular, a regular day at the library. So there, you know, we're still doing quite a lot. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. I think so too. Does anybody have any questions about our statistics or anything? What it looks like for FY 2021, is you had 6,000 circs in the library, and almost 1,400 items went out, and another 666 came in. That that's pretty good, given yeah. the yeah. limited service. The you know, yeah, I don't. That all I, the libraries are dealing with. Yeah, in in tw fiscal year 2021, so far for July and August, we had. I was very surprised at this number. I had to double check it. We have 6,000 certs on the dot. Um, you know, 1,300 items have been sent out, 600 items have come in. 
And even for being closed, I think that's, that's still pretty good. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with those numbers. I mean, I know that nothing this year is going to be what it normally is. So, you know, we, we take it as it comes, but. Are you still getting three deliveries a week or? Yes. Is it yep. less? No, we're, oh. getting, we're getting three a week. We're going through them uh, more slowly because we have to quarantine our deliveries too for three days. So everything comes in, we label it, it sits, and then we can unpack it a couple days later. So our delivery days are kind of a little bit messed up, but we're still getting deliveries. Deliveries are still about the same size, maybe a little more some days. I mean, I think today they had five or six bins to unpack, which is pretty good. Wow. So that, that's, that's a lot of work. Mm, uh -huh. it's, it's quite a lot of work. Um, and thankfully we have our notifications turned back on so we don't we were having to call every we were to do that so i'm that, that's a lot of work and and curbside pickup is great people love it but that takes a lot of work too and i don't I, i'm not going to stop it anytime soon but you know i just it, it keeps our circ staff really busy so i i give them a, a full a really good high five for just <laughs> keeping up with it. Um, you know, have, have you started Saturday? We're going open? to start, uh, we're going to start Saturdays, um, this coming Saturday, which is the 12th. Okay. Um, and all of our Saturday people, um, I talked to everybody, everybody's good. They want to work Saturdays and I wanted to give Saturdays back to our patrons because I think it's really important. So we are going to see, um, you know, give it, Give it some time, see how it runs, and and yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how busy it will be, how quiet it will be, but we'll see. What when does school open? School opens on um, the fifteenth, oh, and okay. yeah. So if if we're okay with the statistics, I can move on to um, some old business we have here that has to do sure. with school. Um, so yeah, on here I have um, for old business, our COVID-19 response and reopening. Not much has changed. Um, we're still open, I think our ladies on the phone have muted themselves. We'll see if they, <laughs> uh, so we're still open for um, browsing by appointment, commute, computer use by appointment, um, that seems to be going well. Right now, we're just trying to figure out um, what we can do about the students, because as we know, uh, school is going to be starting on the 15th. From the sounds of it, there is going to be um, a mixture of fully online and some are going hybrid. I guess I, I, I'm correct. I could be very wrong, but I think some are going back most of the time, um, things keep changing. So I'm trying to keep updated with that. But what we're trying to do right now is to figure out what we can do as far as, um, you know, because we're, we're only open by appointment. We can only have so many people in the building that um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to accommodate students after school. And our, our original thought after meeting with all of us who work in the after school hours was that we were going to set aside um, all of our appointments from say like 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. just for students to use the space for homework, computers, and you know, if it didn't fill up, then we could offer it to anybody else. However, that comes into question with um, the Board of Library Commissioners and state aid because in order for it to qualify as open hours under state aid, um, we have to be open for everyone. So if we were to set aside the time just for students, we're still, we can still do it, um, but it, those hours wouldn't qualify as open hours when they come to make their state aid decision. Now, they did waive the open hours requirement last year because of COVID. They may do so again this year. They're not really, they're still in the process of deciding that too. Um, 
So, so what I was thinking of doing was we have 10 slots for browsing. If I set aside just five for students, and then we have four slots for computers, if I set aside all those four slots for computers for students, then hopefully, you know, that would be at least a good way to begin. And I mean, we don't, we have no idea how busy we're going to be. We could have a lot of kids. We could have no kids. We have, we have no idea. Right. So th I think that's good. And then that way you're not losing your open hours. See how it goes. And then we can, you can always, you know, make decisions accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've, I've reached out to the schools. I know they're really busy, so I haven't really anticipated any, any responses or anything like that. But, um, you know, just to kind of, because we, we always end up with kids hanging out here after school and people waiting for rides and so on and so forth. And they're really trying to encourage people not to take the bus. So I don't want to end up with a bunch of kids outside hanging out that I can't, I don't have the space to let in. Right. The other thing, I wonder who, is there a coordinator for the homeschool? Um, there may be. I don't know off the top of my head. If you, you want, I could try to look into that and see and then, you know, just reach out to them or? Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Just any way okay. we can kind of reach out to people. But yeah, I think that's how we're going to do it for the beginning of the school year and then just just see how it goes. I mean, we have no idea. So, and it starts, what is the 15th, next Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and I, I plan to, you know, once once I firm the details up tomorrow, just sending it another email out to the schools, whether they read it or not, you know, I know they're super busy, but um, just so they're at least aware of it, you know. And I mean, that's, that's all that I can, I can really do. And then we'll just have to make accommodations as, as things happen. Right. And I mean, if we, if we can't let people in, we can't let people in. I mean, I think, I think, and I hope most parents know that, you know, they'd want to check the hours of places, check the details before they, you know, plan on having their kids wait there. But, you can always have a couple out sitting on the picnic table. Yeah, there we go. They can hang out out there as long as long hmm. as they're social distancing, then <laughs> they're good. One at one end of the table and the other one at the there other end. Go. Perfect. Yeah, so so hopefully, I mean, it's thankfully still September, and I want to get this figured out, you know, before it starts getting dark really early and cold, and I just, I don't, I don't like having the kids hang out there. You know, I know I've mentioned in the past, there's been times where we close at five and we're waiting there till 530 right. for a parent to come. And, you know, I don't want them hanging out there in the cold all afternoon. <laughs> so, right. So, yep. I mean, we're going to, I'm just going to firm up a couple details um, in the next day or two, and then we'll just get ready and we'll, we'll see what happens. Again, I have no idea what it's going to look like. So, we, it could be all for nothing, but I'd rather just be prepared. <laughs> then. Um, and old business, again, our fiscal year 21 budget, as you know, we were approved for at the town meeting back in whenever it was. Sure. There we go. <laughs> I feel like the months are going by so quickly. I can't keep up. Um, as of right now, we're still only able to use a small percentage of our budget. But thankfully, we've been able to just kind of keep up with small amounts of book purchasing here and there. So we're, we're keeping the patrons happy as best we can, you know, while we're also the town is waiting on what's going to happen with the state budget before we're released and we can play around with more money. But yeah, I don't I don't know what that means. If, if the state budget comes out to be not good, there may be another spending freeze. We're just kind of waiting to see. I think hopefully last I heard we should hear October, maybe November at the latest. I don't know as, as of right now. It, it looks like the state is doing okay. The revenue is coming in. Good. And they've got over three billion in their rainy day fund. Oh, well, hey. <laughs> it's, it's not like New York State who says yeah. we're six billion in the hole. <laughs> I was going to say, or Connecticut. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we're doing all right. <laughs> okay. 
right. And so if nobody else has any questions about that, um, new business, I sent you guys all the results of the annual survey. Um, we couldn't do it in April as we normally do, and we couldn't do paper versions this year as we normally do. I still wanted, oh, there's Suzanne again. I still wanted to do it just so we had something to go on. Um, so we had 49 people respond. Most responses were positive. I think there was only one. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> I think there was only one that says, this is dumb. Why are you doing this while we're closed? Which is, sure, hey, everybody's entitled to their opinion. <laughs> but um, a, lot of the, a lot of the questions will help us plan ahead. And, you know, I also wanted to get a feel for how people how they felt about how we responded to handling everything during the pandemic. You know, did they want more of this, more of that, less of this? And I think we got the feedback that we wanted. Um, so, and if anybody has any questions about that, I'm just gonna, just gonna use it as far as planning for the end of the year. And then hopefully next year we can do our big annual survey they normally do. Did anybody have any questions or comments or anything? It, the results were good. I didn't print them out. I was just looking them on, hmm. on the screen. And they had looked good. Yeah, no, I was, I was pretty happy with them. <laughs> Some of it cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, there, there, were, there were a few snarky responses, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you, when you put out a public survey, it's fair game. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so... I'm happy, but uh, next thing on the agenda, I sent you also out a, um, this is, it, it's called the Welcome to the Southwick Public Library. It's basically what we give people when they sign up for a card. Um, and I figured we should just vote on it because it is in the policy handbook. Um, I did, I didn't change anything. I just updated the format so it's a little bit easier to read. So did everybody get a copy of that? Yes. Okay, cool. No, I don't get copies of any of these things. I don't know why, but I don't. Okay, I, I usually send them out to you in the mail, and I, and I email, just because sometimes I don't, I, I mail the agenda out, but sometimes I don't have these things quite ready until right, well, right okay. before yeah, the meeting. <laughs> I assume everyone else knows what they are, so. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's nothing new. It's just, um, Format it to look nicer. Who's my book? So I don't, I guess we should, if everybody likes it, we should just vote on it because it is in the policy handbook, so. All those in favor? Michael, yes. Suzanne, yes. Suzanne, yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, Carol, yep. yes. Okay. And let me see. So the next thing that I've been kind of looking into, and I'm just going to find the right paragraph here for it. Um, okay, so um, CW Mars has sent out. Um, it we we did they did have a director's roundtable last month, and this was something that they discussed. And, and they've also sent out a statement on um, they're doing. Hopefully you can't hear that in the back. My husband's making a smoothie. So if you hear a really awful noise, that's our blender. <laughs> um, so they sent out a, a statement against racism. Um, and so what they are encouraging libraries to do, and I'll just, I'll just read their statement because I didn't send it to you. It's very brief. Um, but what they're saying is they're encouraging all of our member libraries to eliminate overdue fines, which prevent an economic barrier to access of library materials and services. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, what they're trying to do is they're trying to encourage member libraries to go find free and permanently yes yes i don't i don't know if this was ever discussed here i don't know if this is something you would like me to look into more um when i had i had heather dunphy our assistant director who does all the uh finances she pulled together a report for me on um what we had 
in fines. Um, now keep in mind, before she started, when the fines were submitted to the town, they weren't always broken down. So we could say specifically, yes, this is a lost fine, or this is a fine, this is this, this is that. Um, she's been very good about kind of making, on each of our deposits, making sure that everything is very specifically noted. So in her um, report, and this, this is from January 2019 to December 2019, I asked her not to do it for this year because this year is just a total wash anyway. We can't predict anything based on what's going on this year. Um, but so from January 19 to December 19, she estimated that the total fines we received are about $2,300 um, in overdue fines. So it's not, it's not a huge number. It's still a substantial number. Um, but that was what she pulled. And I think a lot of what, what the argument for going fine free is, is that a lot of people are arguing that it's not a huge source of revenue. Um, you know, the, the effort that it goes into to collecting fines is often more than it's worth. Um, these aren't my opinions. These are just what I've gleaned from kind of the meetings and reading about it. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of people say that it creates better relationships with our patrons, which I can see that. Um, I've worked in both a place where we do charge fines and we don't. Um, the place I worked where we don't charge fines, I, I felt we had a much better relationship with patrons because we weren't, we weren't always chasing after, you know, you have fines, so you're blocked from doing this, that, and the other thing. Um, what we did, we just had a jar on our circulation desk and people could just pop in whatever they want. You know, we, we told them we, we take fines by donation. So they could choose to put in nothing. If they could afford nothing, they could put in something. Sometimes people slip like tens or twenties into the jar. Um, on the other can hand- Can I ask how many books you lost? You know, actually not, that, actually not that many, you know. I mean, the, the fines are, are an incentive to bring stuff back on time, but people were so happy that, you know, if, hey, I, I forgot, I didn't bring, I'm a couple days late, they didn't have to pay anything. Um, but sometimes, I, aren't they, don't they forget for, for months if they, mm -hmm. if there's, if there's yeah, no reason to bring them back, they'll just yeah, not bother. They'll just not bother, or CWMR sends out reminder emails when things are way overdue. So, I mean, there's, they still charge for lost items. So if somebody loses something, we'll still charge for it. Um, so so there's, there's two sides to this, this argument, you know. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, how many programs could we fund with, you know, our fines go into our gift account, which go back into programs, services, so on and so forth. So how many programs could we have funded with that? say $2,300 or, you know, we, if we have a better relationship with our patrons or, you know, I, I wanted to get your opinion on this because I, I don't, you know, I, I've seen it work well both ways. I think this is the way a lot of things are going now is most are trying to go find free. So I just want well, to, one I was going to say one way of looking at it is, that's the equivalent of one hundred twenty dollar books or four or five programs. Could you live with not having that revenue? Yes, I mean I think so. And here's here's my thinking: is on the flip side, yes, we could live without that revenue. However, I would I we would also need to have a kind of a revitalized source of funding. I mean, now that, you know, the friends are, who knows how long we're not going to be able to do book sales for, you know, so, so we have to kind of reinvent ourselves in another way to figure out how we can also raise money when things like book sales may not be able to happen for a little while, you know, so we have to, if we're going to get rid of it in one area, we kind of have to revamp another area and think outside the box and how we can, how we can raise funds in another way, which 
I mean, there, there are still some, some libraries are doing it very successfully, you know, I, I don't know how long it's going to be till we can have a book sale or any normal type of fundraiser, but there are ways. Well, that, that, that's why I threw it out, you know, could you oh, live yeah. with it if you cut it off? In, in terms of census data, and of course, the census data is always a few years behind, it's saying that 7% or less of the population is in poverty in Southwick. You know, so we're not in the same situation yeah. as a West Springfield or a Springfield or somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of go either way, but I want to make sure both of you have a to live with it. Yeah, and I mean, can, and I'm, can you live with it? Or if it's going to hurt you, then maybe we don't do it. Yeah, way. I mean, I mean, and like nothing has to be decided right now. I just kind of wanted to get a feel for how you felt about it. Um, you know, I'm also going to bring this up to, it sounds like, you know, we're somewhat interested in exploring this area. So I was going to bring it up to the friends who are meeting tomorrow night and say, you know, if we potentially have this, and I don't look at it as a loss of revenue. I mean, it can be a very positive thing too, you know, if, We're not getting these funds in. Maybe we need to look at ways that the friends can also, you know, expand beyond the book sale, which we're probably not going to be able to do. And, you know, what, how else can we make up for this? Um, it could be kind of a, a good opportunity to kind of give us a little a car, car wash in the parking lot. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm thinking the baskets are going to even be hard to do this year. Right. Yeah, I, I think th th they'll, they'll be less than they yeah. have been in the past. I'm, I'm hoping that, um, I, I, I think I was talking with Bonnie about it the other day and I was, I was hoping, you know, it's, it's not the best year to be asking businesses for things. So, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe we'll have less. I mean, I know I will still donate one, you know, there will still be people who donate one, but, but you maybe know, instead of, 25 or 26 baskets, maybe you'll end up with 12 or 14. Yeah, and that's, and that's, some, that's other, okay. some other number. Yeah, yeah. And Just that's, make sure I always do one. Yep, yep. Make so, sure I know. If, if the people can't go into the library the way they always have, if they go by appointment only, you're not going to have as many people buying tickets for them either. No, no, we're not. But we'll, we'll have to come up with some crafty way that maybe they can... Maybe they can do it some other way. That we'll have to figure out. Um, but could we try the no fine thing on a temporary basis? We could. We could. Um, it, it makes me a little uncomfortable. Oh, it's, but then it's, to, then it's awfully to hard to go fine. back to finding them again. That's you know, true. Yeah. No well, fine, we'll say it's because of COVID. Oh, I yeah. Have, I mean, right, I have right, recorded yeah. this in the minutes about there was a lots of discussion. But yes. nothing's been decided. So yes. we'll leave it for next month. Yes, nothing's okay. been decided. Everybody yeah. can just think about it. I, I will say right now, we are not charging fines because of COVID. Because the reminder emails weren't going out. You know, I if, if somebody's sick, they can hang on to it for a while. I don't care. Keep it in your house. You know, I, as of right now, we're not charging fines. And people seem to be very, very appreciative of that. And I haven't seen... You know, in, in places I've worked that they haven't charged fines, I, I haven't seen an unusual number of lost books or things not returned. You know, I mean, I think you're going to get that anywhere. But if, if this is something that you guys are okay with, I can look into it more and just, you know, see. Uh, yep, she's got her coffee. <laughs> and just see, you know, I mean, nothing, nothing has to be decided. This is going to be something that will probably be a couple months out at least, but you know, at least if we can, if I can just look into a little bit more. Um, Mike, I don't know if this is something we would need to get town approval for. No. Okay, because it, no. it's nothing that, it, it doesn't have to do with any of their money, so. No. Okay. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. If only Herb Pace was alive today. <laughs> Carol and them will know that one. <laughs> Wait a minute, say, I missed half of what you said. I said her pace. I was thinking of him during this whole conversation. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> he would love to. Yes. 
<laughs> but then he'd complain that you hadn't done it before. <laughs> so Just find a way to complain about it. Yeah. Oh, funny. Okay, so I will I will take a look into this. Um, like I said, as of right now, we're not charging fines because of COVID. Um, so maybe even these last couple months where we haven't been charging fines, we can kind of use it as an example to see how it has been. Um, so, you know, and honestly, people have been, there's been, there was, there's been people who have just like slipped us a 20 or something and said, we're so happy to be here again. Here's a donation of $20. You know, it's, we're kind of making up for our lost fines and just people being very happy that we're actually here. <laughs> so, so I will do some research and I'll look into it a little bit more. Um, and the next thing on the list is um, Eris and State Aid. So Heather Dunphy is currently working on um, the Eris report and then we'll work on State Aid. Um, deadlines have all been pushed out because of COVID. So uh, the Eris is not due until I think it's October 1st now. And, usually, isn't that one in September or something? Is yeah, it? it's usually much earlier, but they pushed it out to give us some more time to work on it. So, so I'll be in touch with you, Mike, in okay. maybe a week or two to come in and sign it. Um, sure. I think she's pretty much almost wrapped up with that one. Um, and then the last thing on here, I just wanted you guys to let you guys know that it's something I've been looking into. Um, you know, obviously, we are reaching our 10,000 mark as a town. Um, and so I've kind of been reaching out to the state aid and I'm sorry, not state, the board of library commissioners and CW Mars to see what happens um, when we do pass that mark. And the good news is, is that we have a lot of time once we have, basically, I think both of them give us at least a couple years before any increases like CW Mars, she's saying it'll probably be, you know, at least fiscal year 2022-23, okay. if we hit that 10,000 person mark, right. that we're going to see any increases in charges on our CW Mars bill. So anything, at least that stuff is at least no. year out, but I just wanted to have it so that we knew because we are, we are very fast approaching it. I think in our department head meeting a week or two ago, they, they were talking about how many new developments and houses are being built. So we're going to approach that 10,000 mark pretty quickly. But um, it's nothing that we're going to have to, you know, we keep it in the back of our minds, but nothing that we have to think about right away. It's going to be a couple years before anything's going to come of it. All right. And that's, that's all I had, unless you guys had any questions or comments or anything or... I had a question yes. <clears throat> about signing the bills. Yes. I haven't been, but I can come in. I talked to Heather today. Okay. And she said, well, they didn't want me to go out of my way, but I can come back. I mean, I can do that on Mondays. That's not a problem. Okay. Sure. I will, I will let her know tomorrow, and then you guys can kind of, and then she'll reach out to you. I'm just going to send myself a memo so okay. I can remember. Yep. Um, and then she'll, she'll reach okay. out to you. And yeah, I think while everything was going crazy, they said we don't. <laughs> right. So now, now that everything's kind of slowed back down again, I'll let Heather know that, that you're happy to come back in and sign everything again. Okay. And this coming Monday is one of the days. Okay. But I wanted to check on it. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So she's probably working on it now. I'll let her know tomorrow when I see your first thing. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Carol. Anything else from anybody or do we have, does anybody want to make a motion to, <laughs> to end the meeting? Motion to adjourn, Suzanne. I second, second Carol. Okay. <laughs> great. Okay. My, Michael, I, let's end the meeting. So it's unanimous? Yep. Yes.